What if I told you that the most expensive warship ever built by the United States Navy was a failure, seven and a half billion dollars per ship, guns that couldn't fire, a mission that disappeared, critics calling it a billion dollar blunder. But what if that failure was just the beginning? What if the most criticized destroyer in American history was about to become the most feared weapon on Earth? This is the story of death and resurrection. The story of the USS Zumwalt and how a ship built for the wrong war became the right weapon for the next one. October 2016, Baltimore Harbor. The USS Zumwalt glides into port for the first time. People stop, they stare. This doesn't look like any warship they've ever seen. No curves, no traditional hull, just sharp angular lines cutting through the water like a blade. It looks alien, futuristic, almost menacing. And it should be, because the Zumwalt isn't just a destroyer, it's a ghost. On radar, this 610-foot warship, bigger than a World War II cruiser, appears as nothing more than a small fishing boat. 50 times harder to detect than an ordinary destroyer. Invisible, silent, deadly. But there was a problem, a very expensive problem. Let's go back. The year is 2001. America is rethinking naval warfare. The Cold War is over. The new battlefield isn't the open ocean. It's the coastlines of hostile nations. The Navy has a vision, a stealth destroyer that can sneak close to enemy shores and rain down precision fire from massive advanced guns. They call it the Zumwalt class, DDG-1000. It was supposed to be a revolution. The plan? Build 32 of these ships, a whole fleet of invisible gunships. But then, the costs started climbing. 4 billion, 5 billion, 6 billion per ship. The program breached something called the Nunn McCurdy Amendment, a federal law that triggers when a defense project goes catastrophically over budget. Congress panicked. 32 ships became 7, then 7 became 3, only 3 ships. And then came the cruelest blow of all, the guns. The Zumwalt's main weapons were two massive 155 mm advanced gun systems. State of the art, deadly capable of hitting targets 63 nautical miles away. But they required special ammunition, long-range land attack projectiles, LRLAPS, each round nearly $1 million, $1 million per bullet. The Navy looked at the math, and they said no. They canceled the ammunition program, which meant the Zumwalt's guns, the entire reason the ship was built, became useless, expensive, lifeless, metal sculptures. The mission disappeared too. Modern cruise missiles made it too dangerous for the Zumwalt to operate close to shore anyway. So so now the Navy had three massive stealth destroyers. With no mission, critics sharpened their knives. White Elephant, the ship that doesn't work. The most expensive mistake in naval history. But deep inside the Pentagon, someone saw something else. Because here's what the critics missed. The Zumwalt wasn't a bad ship. It was just carrying the wrong weapons. Strip away the failed guns, and what do you have? You have a platform unlike anything else in the world. First, that stealth. The tumble-home hull, those inward sloping sides, aren't just for show. They scatter radar waves. They absorb detection signals. On enemy screens, the Zumwalt vanishes. A 15,000-ton destroyer, masquerading as a fishing trawler. Second, the power. The Zumwalt runs on an integrated power system, a turboelectric drive that generates 78 megawatts of electricity. That's 105,000 shaft horsepower. Enough to power a small city. Why does that matter? Because the weapons of the future don't run on gunpowder. They run on electricity, lasers, electromagnetic railguns, directed energy systems. The Zumwalt was already built to handle them. Third, automation. The ship operates with a crew of just 130 sailors, half the crew of older destroyers. That's efficiency. That's cost savings. That's the future. So the ship wasn't the problem. The mission was. And in 2023, the mission changed. August 2023, Pascagoula, Mississippi. A construction crew approaches the USS Zumwalt with cutting torches. Their orders are simple. Remove the guns. All of them. Both 155mm turrets. Gone. Ripped out. Hauled away. And in their place? Something new. Something terrifying. Advanced payload modules. A PMS. But these aren't just storage containers, they're launch tubes. For America's newest weapon, the long-range hypersonic weapon, the conventional prompt strike missile. Here's what you need to understand about hypersonics. These missiles don't just fly fast, they fly at Mach 5 or greater, five times the speed of sound. They maneuver unpredictably in mid-flight, and they're nearly impossible to intercept. Traditional missile defenses? Useless. Radar tracking? Too slow. By the time an enemy knows the missile is coming, it's already hit. And the Zumwalt, with its stealth, its power, its space, was the perfect platform. The hypersonic missiles were too large for standard vertical launch systems. But the Zumwalt's gun turrets, those massive empty spaces, perfect fit. So the Navy made a decision, scrap the failed guns, install the future. By 2025, the USS Zumwalt is expected to be the first American surface combatant capable of launching hypersonic strikes. A ship
ship once mocked as a failure, reborn as a superweapon. But let's zoom out for a moment, because the Zumwalt's transformation isn't happening in a vacuum. It's happening at the most dangerous moment in modern naval history. The Pacific is no longer America's lake. China has built the world's largest navy, by ship count, over 350 hulls. They're launching destroyers at a pace America hasn't seen since World War II. Their DF-21D and DF-26 carrier killer missiles can strike American carriers from a thousand miles away. They're militarizing the South China Sea, building artificial islands, installing radar, deploying fighters, and they're developing their own hypersonic weapons. Russia already deployed them. The Zircon missile, Mach 9, ship launched, operational since 2023. They've used hypersonics in Ukraine. This isn't theory anymore, it's reality. The race for hypersonic dominance isn't coming, it's here. And America was late to the party, until now, because the Zumwalt changes the equation. Think about it strategically. China's carrier killers are designed to keep American ships far from their coastline. It's called anti-access slash area denial. A 2 slash AD. They create a bubble, a no-go zone, around Chinese territory. American carriers have to stay outside that bubble, outside the range of those missiles. But the Zumwalt, it doesn't care about bubbles. Its stealth means it can slip through detection networks. Its hypersonic missiles mean it can strike first, before the enemy even knows it's there. Suddenly, China's coastal defenses aren't so impenetrable anymore. Suddenly, their billion-dollar investments in carrier killer missiles meet a ship they can't find. That's not just a technology logical advantage. That's a strategic checkmate. But there's something else we need to talk about. Something beyond hulls and missiles and radar signatures. The people. Because the Zumwalt's crew, those 130 sailors, aren't just operating a ship. They're operating the future of naval warfare. Think about what that means. These sailors are the first generation to crew a vessel where automation isn't a luxury. It's the design. Where artificial intelligence assists with navigation. Where sensors and systems talk to each other without human input. It's a different kind of seamanship. One that requires technical mastery not just tradition, and it's working. The Navy's initial skepticism about such a small crew, it's fading. Because when you design a ship from the ground up for efficiency, when you eliminate unnecessary manual tasks, when you let technology handle the routine so humans can focus on the critical, you don't need 500 sailors. You need the right 130. Specialists, problem solvers, warriors who understand both the old rules of the sea and the new rules of cyber warfare. That's the Zumwalt crew. And when 2025 comes, when that first hypersonic missile roars off the deck, They'll be the ones who prove the concept. Not just the ship, not just the weapon, but the entire philosophy of 21st century naval power. Now, let's be honest. The Zumwalt story isn't finished. There are still questions. Will the hypersonic integration work as planned? Can three ships really make a strategic difference against a Chinese fleet of hundreds? What happens if the technology fails again? And here's the hardest question of all. Was it worth it? Seven and a half billion dollars per ship. Three ships. Over 20 billion dollars total. For context, that's more than the GDP of some nations. Could that money have built more proven destroyers? More submarines? Maybe. But here's the counter-argument. Innovation is expensive. The first stealth fighter, the F-117 Nighthawk, cost over $100 million per plane in the 1980s. People called it a waste, until Desert Storm, until it became the weapon that changed air warfare forever. The first nuclear submarines were wildly over budget, until they became the backbone of America's strategic deterrent. Breakthrough technology always looks like a mistake, until it doesn't. And the Zumwalt? It's forcing adversaries to rethink their entire naval strategy. It's proving that stealth and power can coexist on the surface, not just underwater. It's creating a template for the next generation of American warships. DDGX, the Navy's future destroyer, will incorporate lessons from the Zumwalt, the technology, the power systems, the automation. Without the Zumwalt's expensive learning curve, DDGX wouldn't exist. So was it worth it? Ask that question again in 2030. When hypersonics are standard, when stealth is mandatory, when the Pacific is contested and America needs every advantage, the answer might be different. Let's talk about what this means. Imagine you're an adversary. You're tracking American naval forces in the Pacific. Your radar picks up, a fishing boat. You ignore it. And then, without warning, a hypersonic missile erupts from the water. Mach 5, maneuvering, unstoppable. It covers a thousand miles in minutes. Your coastal defenses don't even have time to react. By the time your systems detect the launch, the target is already destroyed. That's the Zumwalt now. A ghost ship, carrying the fastest weapons on the planet, invisible until it strikes, untouchable once it does. The ship that was supposed to replace battleships, it just became something better. A hypersonic strike platform, a strategic game changer. The critics called it a failure. They were wrong. The Zumwalt wasn't built for the last war. It was built for the next one. And that war is already here. So what do we take from this? Sometimes, failure is just preparation. The Zumwalt was ridiculed, mocked, called obsolete before it even fired a shot. But the engineers who designed it
behind it knew something the critics didn't. They built a ship for weapons that didn't exist yet. They created a platform with so much power, so much capability, that it could adapt. And when the world changed, when hypersonics became the new frontier, the Zumwalt was ready. Because that's what America does. We don't just react to threats. We anticipate them. We build systems so advanced that even when the mission changes, the platform endures. The Zumwalt story isn't about failure. It's about evolution. From gunship to ghost ship. From criticism to dominance. From the most expensive mistake to the most dangerous weapon. The three ships of the Zumwalt class, Zumwalt, Michael Mansour, and Lyndon B. Johnson, aren't just destroyers. They're test beds, pioneers, proof of concept. They're showing the Navy and the world what's possible when you stop building for yesterday's war. And in 2025, when that first hypersonic missile launches from the deck of the USS Zumwalt, when it screams across the Pacific at Mach 5, when it strikes a target that never saw it coming, the world will understand. This ship was never a failure. It was always a warning, a statement, a promise. That America's Navy doesn't just rule the waves, it defines them. Because American power isn't built on luck, it's built on vision. It's built on the willingness to fail forward, to learn, adapt, and dominate. And when the future arrives, we'll already be there, waiting. The Zumwalt class is more than a ship, it's a turning point. Subscribe to Civic Shadows for the untold stories of America's naval supremacy. Let me see.